Hello and welcome to Unit 6B, video lesson number 6. The reading to go along with this video <gasps> doesn't exist! We are going to be talking about solving systems of polar equations, and although we are not going to have any new reading, if you wanted to review, you can go back to Chapter 5, Section 1 and Chapter 5, Section 4, and they have some things about how to solve trig equations, and those are both going to be helpful in remembering how to do this new topic of solving systems of polar equations. So to begin, we're going to take a trip down memory lane. Last November and December, we solved a lot of trig equations together, and on your own. Like this one! This one was taken directly from your Unit 3 review packet. Yay! Okay, so let's talk about how to solve this. We are solving it on the interval between 0 and 2 pi, including 2 pi, not including 0, so that cannot be our answer. Alright, and we are trying to solve 3 cosine x plus 4 equals 5 cosine x plus 5. If you remember correctly, we need to try and get cosine of x by itself first. So, just like if you had normal x on both sides of the equation, we're going to subtract 3 cosine x from both sides, and end up with 2 cosine of x, plus 5 over here, and they cancel out and you end up with 4 over here. And you can subtract 5 from both sides to get all the numbers on the other side to get negative 1 equals 2 cosine of x, and divide by 2, negative 1 half equals cosine of x. From here, you had to take the inverse cosine. Now, this is a non-calculator question, because we're only going to be doing non-calculator questions for the polar equations we're going to be solving. So when we were doing this as a non-calculator, I always told you it's a good idea to draw out where your answers are going to be, remembering that all students take calculus. We have a negative answer to cosine. All positive can't be in the first quadrant. Fourth quadrant, cosine's positive, can't be in the fourth quadrant. But I could have a triangle in the second or in the third. I'm going to label those with my one half, thinking, hmm, would this be a 30, 60, 90, or a 45, 45, 90, if one of these sides is 1 and the other is 2? And if you know your special right triangles, you should know, oh, my hypotenuse has to be 2, and my 1 for cosine is the adjacent, so that's going to be here. And then this side is going to be root 3. I could also label down here, but I don't feel like it, because these are going to just be a reflection of the exact same triangle. Looking at this, I'm thinking, alright, this is my reference angle, it's across from my square root of 3, so my reference angle has to be 60 degrees, which in radians is pi over 3. They asked for radians, so we're going to have to give our answer in radians. x equals what is the angle with a reference angle of pi over 3 in the second quadrant? Well, that will be pi minus pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. x also equals, in the third quadrant, pi plus another pi over 3, because we get pi and then you're going an extra amount, which is 4 pi over 3. Remembering this from the last semester? I hope so. Those would be your two answers. Two answers because there are two quadrants between 0 and 2 pi that have those um, negative cosine answers. Now, what does that look like graphically? If we go to our handy dandy quackalators, we were saying here, making sure we're in the correct mode, yes, we're in radians, we were saying that 3 times the cosine of x 
plus 4 should be equal to 5 times the cosine of x plus 5. So if we were to graph these, and I am going to um, change my window so that my x values are going from 0 to 2 pi, because that's our range. I'm going to graph this, and we have a nice cosine curve and another nice cosine curve. And the two values we found were here and here at the intersection of those two graphs. I have to go over here to find closer to this intersection. It'll find that intersection here. That's my 2 pi over 3, 2.09. Or I could calculate my other intersection over here. Do, 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 do. Remember, when you had multiple intersections, you have to, have to actually go close to them. And it should calculate this is 4 pi over 3. Okay. So that is what I just calculated graphically. Now, new stuff. That was enough old. Bring in the new solving systems of polar equations. What's the basic idea? You're given r equals some f at theta and r equals some g at theta. So you're going to set f at theta equal to g at theta and solve for theta. I want you to try this one on your own. All you have to do is set 3 cosine theta plus 4 equal to 5 cosine theta plus 5 and solve for theta on the interval 0 less than theta less than or equal to 2 pi. Pause the video, try on your own. I'll wait, go ahead. Alright, are you back? Great, let's see how you did. Is this what you got? Now the question is, did you notice that when you set these two equations equal to each other, it was the exact same equation that we solved on the previous page, just with theta instead of x. I hope you noticed, because it was the exact same equation. In fact, solving systems of polar equations requires the exact same skill set that you used back in November and December when you were solving regular trig equations that were rectangular. The main difference is what does it look like graphically. So we're going to go back to our little calculator. But instead of using this rectangular form, we're going to change modes. We're going to go into polar mode, because these are polar equations. In y equals, we're going to put that same thing, 3 cosine of theta plus 4, and 5 cosine of theta plus 5. In our window in polar, we have the option of changing the minimum and maximum theta. Because our interval was 0 to 2 pi, that's kind of the automatic what they'll give to you. If it's ever more than that, you'd have to change your min and max. For my x min, I had before 0 to 2, the to, uh, pi in the last one. I'm going to change that to negative 10 all the way up to 10. And my y's, I'm still going to keep negative 10 to 10. So let's see what happens when I graph that. Ooh. Those look different, don't they? We're going to be learning how to graph those in a day or so. For now, we see this calculator gives us a very different idea of what the graph of cosine looks like. We're going to zoom in a little bit so that we can see we have still two points of intersection.
let's just change the wind down. Negative 4 to 4, negative 4 to 4. The zooming in wasn't working the second one. That's the first equation. Here's my second equation. And you see that there are two points of intersection, and those are the two points we found, 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So I told you that solving polar equations just requires the same skills as before. So the methods you need to remember are, number one, when you're solving trig functions, which is the same as solving systems of polar equations, you need to isolate the trig function using two-step equations, like we were doing in the previous pages, or factoring, um, which we're going to be seeing a little bit soon. And then you have to take the inverse trig function. Remember that when we were taking the inverse trig functions, we had to find all possible solutions within the given range, and it helps to draw triangles in the needed quadrants. Sometimes you will need to remember your trig identities in order to solve. Sorry. I know you thought it was all do done last semester, but yeah, it comes back to bite you if you don't remember these. And if you're going to calculus, you really need to know them. So let's try one that has some trig identities. This time we're solving on the interval from 0 to 4 pi, so that's two rotations. Let's see what that looks like. We have r cosine of 2 theta, and r is 1 minus sine of theta. 2 theta inside a cosine makes me think, ah, do you remember your double angle identity for cosine? Here it is. Cosine of 2 theta can be replaced with cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta, or 2 cosine squared of theta minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta. Now which one are you going to want to do? Well, we need to set these equal to each other. So I have cosine of 2 theta equals 1 minus sine of theta. I have a sine of theta over here. So I'm probably going to want to pick the replacement of cosine 2 theta that has just sine in it. So I replace this with 1 minus 2 times the sine squared theta equals 1 minus sine theta. This is a quadratic because we are squaring a sine. With quadratics, you generally want to get everything on one side so that you can factor. So I'm going to subtract my 1 and add 2 sine squared theta to both sides. And I end up with 0 equals 2 sine squared theta minus sine of theta. And then when I subtracted 1 from both sides, they canceled out. So it would be plus 0, which I don't need to write. Now I'm factoring a binomial instead of a trinomial, and it's much easier because I have a common factor. I have a sine of theta here and a sine of theta there, so I'm going to factor out my sine of theta. What's remaining is going to be 2 sine of theta minus 1. Since those are both equal to 0, I can set each piece equal to 0. And I also added 1 to both sides in one step. So sine of theta equals 1 half. Sine of theta equals 0. Last step. You're not done until you have all the thetas. So over here, we've got sine of theta equals 0. Now that's not a special right triangle. That's one of the things that's in between quadrants. We have to think, oh yeah, sine. That's always going to be my vertical, my y value, right? 
So when is my y value 0? Here and here on my unit circle. So this would be the angle 0 or 2 pi, right? This would be my angle pi. Now am I going to be using 0 or 2 pi? Well, I look up here at my interval and I say 0 is less than theta, not less than or equal to. So I can just get rid of that 0. So I know here theta can equal pi and 2 pi. But that's just in the first rotation. Pi and 2 pi. I need to go around a whole other time. Now I'm getting around again. So I've gone a full rotation beyond pi. So 2 pi more than that is 3 pi. And 2 pi more than 2 pi, because I've gone a full extra rotation around, is 4 pi. Now let's look over here. Remember, these are just from the extra rotation, since we're going all the way out to 4 pi. Sine is positive. All students take calculus. That means the two quadrants I can be in are the first quadrant or the second quadrant. 1 over 2 tells me this is going to be a 30, 60, 90 triangle with the hypotenuse of 2. Since it's sine, my opposite side is 1. That tells me my reference angle is 30 degrees or pi over 6. Let's find our thetas. In the first quadrant, we've got just pi over 6. Next, I have pi minus pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 6. But that's not all, because that only goes in the first rotation. This might be pi over 6 as the angle, but what if I go around and then another pi over 6? That's pi 2 pi plus pi over 6. That's going to be 12 pi over 6 plus another 13 pi over 6. And over here we had 5 pi over 6, but we went around a whole other rotation beyond that, so I have to add another 2 pi to get the coterminal angle. So that's going to be 12 pi over 6 plus 5 pi over 6, which is 17 pi over 6. And you could graph that as well if we wanted to, making sure to change the theta from 0 to 4 pi instead of 0 to 2 pi, and we would see these eight places where our two graphs would intersect. We'll practice that a little bit more tomorrow. For now, have a good night.